I have this um, um, honor to really have um, um, Koki here. Um, um, Koki, uh, I just asked him um, to check my memory. Um, actually, my memory, memory proves to be uh, quite okay, even at my age. Um, so I find out he's, uh, he was born in 75, 1975, last century, of course. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, um, but he's still a young artist, let's say. Uh, do you agree? Um, yeah, still 39, so it's probably yeah, young. So it's, he's still a young artist because these days, you know, we keep kind of delaying the retirement age. Um, so we can pay more for the uh, insurance, basically. That's the theory today. Um, so you, you have to get, you know, 72 to get to retirement soon, not 62 anymore. Sorry. <laughs> but, so this is why, you know, young artists can, we can count young artists um, uh, up to maybe 50. Um, I think that's a very good news. Um, honestly, because that means, you know, today our creative life is somehow uh, extended. It somehow, you know, make us feel that, you know, uh, more confident in facing a very complicated world. And especially um, the world which is full of contradictions, right? Uh, as I said, you know, we have to pay more to get the retirement. We also have to face more conflicts, more difficulties, more disasters and so on. And, um, and Koki's work, for me, um, it's, a very good, uh, how to say, recipe to f for us to learn how to face these difficulties. And they're very close to our life, they're very uh, beautiful, but on the other hand, they're also very politically, uh, I would say, defying. It's not only challenging, but really defying um, the reality which is uh, getting more and more uh, complicated. I, I think we are going to see um, some presentation that um, he has chosen uh, as, I guess, uh, some uh, articulations on, um, on your uh, very diverse and very rich uh, story or history of, you know, uh, being an artist. And, um, and um, uh, especially one of, one of the really uh, impressive uh, aspect in this pavilion project was um, how um, he recycled the previous, the materials from the previous exhibition uh, uh, in the Japanese uh, pavilion, uh, which was an um, architecture project um, about how architects were mobilizing to face the earthquake um, disaster and how he actually extended this um, um, research. May yeah. Maybe I show the image or yeah. I uh, okay, I just <laughs> I, I, mean, I just finish this and no, then no, no, no. okay, show I, the image. I, please. I mean, uh, so show the image of the architecture. Yeah, please, please, yeah, yeah because please. Um, yeah, I think it's really. It's, sorry, yeah. I, I just no, 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 no. I just interrupted the order of. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the, this interruption just somehow it comes naturally. So I, I would say, uh, is it? Um, a, it's a little bit like uh, Koki's exhibition. It's um. It's a multi-directional exhibition. It's not a linear uh, kind of structure. I think this is also very important. And so this is um, maybe Koki, you can you can tell us a little bit about this. Ah, okay. Start Sorry. from here. Uh, because this is the image of the architecture of, uh, uh, of the Japan Pavilion. So uh, uh, as as you say, it's a uh, collaborative project that uh, uh, three architects did the. Pro uh, uh, communal uh, uh, b building the communal house at the site where the tsunami uh, washed away entire city. Uh, it was in the uh, uh, Rikuzen Takada. So uh, um, yeah, I mean, I just uh, wanted to show this because uh, it's a uh, 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 it's connected to what you say. Um, um, then I, I actually recycled this uh, uh, the pavilion one before uh, in Venice to uh, create my uh, 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 installation. And uh, OK, so and this is the image of the uh, entrance. I even put the, my uh, uh, poster on the top of the 
uh, architecture biennial one year before. Uh, because uh, I somehow share the idea of uh, collaboration uh, uh, of the people uh, into my practice. So, uh, so um, I'm just, uh, let's say, uh, totally improvising the, the order of this uh, strategy. So, uh, according to your uh, uh, interpretation, um, because I, I feel like uh, uh, if I do something about Japan, a Japanese disaster, uh, because there is a certain distance uh, from Venice to Japan, and this number, uh, uh, 9,478. 0.57 kilometer is the exact uh, uh, distance from Fukushima to the Japan Pavilion. And I try to uh, bring this distance uh, to the Japan Pavilion. Uh, so then I somehow uh, uh, inviting people to do a sort of a creative uh, collaboration. Um, the one is you uh, already probably sh uh, saw uh, at the, my, uh, my show downstairs, uh, which was I invite the five potters to create the one uh, pottery together. Um, and th this is actually shot in China, and uh, uh, it's also the distance from Japan to China. So uh, people thought about why uh, this artist doing the project in China, uh, uh, because he, uh, doing something for the Jap um, Japanese disaster. So uh, I, because I was thinking about the distance, uh, which is probably very important to uh, uh, connect the, uh, our thought into uh, disaster moment in a way. Because um, uh, my way of looking at the disaster is not just uh, uh, negative things. Of course, it's a uh, disaster, crisis, a catastrophe, uh, which is not really good for us. But uh, uh, once it's happened, we cannot avoid the, the memory or experience. And uh, th there was a one, uh, uh, let's say, utopian moment uh, happening just after, right after the earthquake in Tokyo, which was people start to helping each other. Uh, in a way, because um, uh, all the public transportation was uh, fucked up at the moment when the earthquake happened, and people start to walk back their home, and um, they start to somehow, uh, because they never walk back their home, so they start to uh, communicate together to find a way to back their home. And even some shops, they give the food for free or something, so people somehow uh, collaborating at the moment, and uh, 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 so I try to recall the memory of the utopian moment right after the disaster uh, to bring that into totally different context, which is the creative moment, uh, be because the creation uh, is always facing the fa failure, and of course, uh, when you when, when you see this piece, uh, they try to make something together, but they fail again and again. Um, Koki, maybe we can go back to the order of your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's, this is a very good beginning to bring us back to kind of uh, to the to the first moment of your work. Actually, um, this idea of um, um, collaborating with the community and the trying to you know uh, build a bridge between individual creation and the public uh, perception the public participation um, it's uh, of course today is a very important topic but very often we do it a lot of artists a lot of curators uh, try to uh, come up with projects which are usually quite politically correct let's say people want to show the the are good to the others, right? The others can also be good to us, right? That kind of, uh, but somehow I think it's a, a, too much like a shortcut uh, in terms of, you know, human relationship. And in fact, in reality, human relationships are much more complicated and very much full of uh, misunderstanding and conflicts. And also uh, what kind of, you know, solution to deal with this, um, I think should very often pass by sense of humor, irony, um, mockery, or uh, other, other ways of you know, uh, um, creating a, a 
a kind of a critical sphere inside the public sphere. I guess you know a lot of, of your work is very much uh, uh, starting from you know uh, some actions that can generate this kind of critical sphere. Um, for example, um, maybe we can look at yeah. Um, I think this this critical sphere uh, probably is as the title of the the show and and also your your research about the title um, is really very much uh, related to this the vulnerable narra narrative right uh, um, or narration uh, uh, yeah narrator that's the so um, so this critical sphere this um, complication is very much. Uh, often it's very uh, fragile, it's very um, subtle, it's very complicated, and you don't know when you would encounter someone who just beat you up, um, who doesn't like what you say, or someone who would just you know, uh, be more excessive, and also how to, how to create the kind of precise or accurate uh, narration about this relationship. It's a very complica uh, complicated affair. So um, maybe you can start from there to talk about okay. your work. Uh, yeah, um, I uh, uh, put the title Vulnerable Narrator for my uh, show here. Uh, one of the uh, reasons why I decided this title is because um, I always feel uneasy to in front of the people to speak, right? <laughs> so, or uh, to show my piece in the uh, museum or gallery because um, uh, I feel it's always like weak in a way because artists always need to be strong, but uh, uh, at the same time I feel it's really weak, and uh, uh, so it's a, always facing sort of like an uneasy moment uh, to do something together with others. Uh, but uh, uh, what I found is the because um, even if we are uh, really vulnerable or really uh, un, uh, feels uneasy. Uh, that's the, probably uh, one of the way we could like see something really deeply. Because um, if you feels uncomfortable, you're just uh, thinking about why this situation is uncom uncomfortable, or why this situation is uh, give me uh, um, something to think about. So uh, that's why uh, the the vulnerable situation is not only for uh, my situation, it's also for all the uh, uh, people's situation right now. Yeah. And you, I think you did a very conceptual research um, on this, uh, this concept, right? There's two <laughs> words. This almost looks like a, a Joseph Kossuth piece here. <laughs> <laughs> but this is from uh, Macintosh, so uh, uh, it's a, a dictionary from the Macintosh. So <laughs> but uh, yeah, easy to understand like how 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 the meaning is. So uh, yeah. Now eventually, of course, you know this relationship uh, between um, your work and also other artists' work. It's a, a very important kind of inspiration from what I understand. So maybe you can tell us about the why you know David Hammond's uh, and um, uh, and this uh, 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 Yoshiharu Tsuge yeah, uh, are put in the front of the exhibition. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, of course, uh, you, you probably already know about the, like, uh, the project by David Hammonds, and many of uh, Japanese students also know about the uh, Yoshiharu Tsuge's Muno uh, uh, no Hito, the no, uh, uh, a useless man. Uh, it's a uh, comic book. Uh, it's a kind of like a, a co co coincidence that the uh, two different like artists and the cartoonists did this uh, sort of like similar things. Uh, David Hammond uh, was selling the snowball on the on the street of New York in winter time, and uh, uh, in the comic book, the guy uh, quit from uh, making a comic book. He's selling the stone on the uh, riverbed, so uh, they somehow share the uh, certain idea of doing something, but looks like doing almost nothing. Um, I inspired by these two uh, 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 project, and I was thinking about what is the uh, things in between snowball and stone, and uh, uh, be because I live in Los Angeles, uh, uh, David Tom did the uh, 
project in New York and together the things in uh, Tokyo. So Los Angeles is geographically in, in a way in between. And also uh, uh, I found that the palm tree leaves is the kind of like in between uh, object uh, of the snowball and the stone because uh, when when the huge wind come, uh, people needs to sweep away the uh, palm palm tree leaves uh, on the street, uh, and uh, uh, palm tree leaves, of course, uh, if if you just uh, uh, leave it, it's not disappear as uh, uh, snow. So it's a uh, materially in between a snowball and stone. And I uh, place those things uh, at the uh, free market to sell uh, to to try to sell. Uh, so uh, I uh, positioned myself in the uh, little bit uh, unusual situation to uh, generate the people's reaction. So you will see the, uh, how people react to this uh, uh, sort of like, uh, like extreme situation in a way. Yeah, maybe, maybe here you just give us a, a, a little bit of storytelling about how you, I mean, uh, what what. Um, this project, how, how it took place. Um. Okay, um, um, uh, I, I try to sort of like, uh, let's say, uh, of course I'm trying to sell palm tree leaves, but at the same time, I was telling the uh, person who uh, come, come to me, uh, I'm, because he asked me, why are you doing this? Then I uh, tell them about the, I'm setting sort of like uh, ideas or story because um, uh, we sometimes uh, buy things not only because of the, the things is great, uh, but the, because of the, the story is great. Because um, if you buy like a fashion uh, clothes or something, it's always the story behind. So we're not really just buying things, but we are buying sort of like a stories of uh, something else. And uh, it was in the uh, antiquity market. Ah, right? yeah, it was in the yeah uh, uh, f free market in Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> and you end up being kicked out by uh, the yeah, I end up <laughs> kicking out <laughs> by the, uh, the yeah. guards. Right? Yeah, because of the the, the manager from the uh, free market. Uh, that's the own, uh, first day of her job, and she came over to me and uh, because we, uh, I, I mean, I registered. I'm selling the un uh, like antique and. Uh, a second-hand uh, thing and like uh, used things, and she somehow understand because um, the palm tree leaves are used by palm tree once, so it's a used item. So, so definition-wise, it's uh, okay. But for her, uh, even if it's uh, okay by the definition, but uh, she doesn't wants to uh, get any trouble with this. So uh, eventually, I was kicked out there. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then, yeah, I already talked about this, so maybe I just skip a little bit. So, uh, and uh, 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 in, in Japan Pavilion, there was also the other project, uh, which I called the Collective Action, Collective Acts. Uh, which was somehow inspired by the uh, uh, many of uh, social movement happening in uh, around the world, and uh, in Japan there was the also uh, a huge uh, protest uh, happened in 2012. Uh, it was uh, one year after the uh, the nuclear crisis uh, caused by the tsunami and the new uh, earthquake, and. Uh, but uh, uh, I felt like even many Japanese people uh, participating in this uh, huge demonstration, I still feel like, because I was in uh, uh, Los Angeles and uh, probably the like, uh, like west side of Japan, uh, or uh, the people living in some other place in Japan, they cannot come over to participate in this uh, demonstration. So I, I was thinking about how we could participate uh, like these demonstration without participating in a way. So uh, uh, I, uh, looking back the one of the, uh, uh, like as you said, like uh, I'm also 
using the art history as a recipe in a way. So I, looking back to one of the piece by Jiro Takamatsu who uh, made a sort of like an instruction piece, which is not uh, uh, really political statement, but uh, uh, maybe yeah, I just... Maybe you can explain a little bit who was uh, Takamatsu. Ah, yeah, Jiro Takamatsu is the, uh, uh, the artist who active in like late 60s or 70s. Uh, who was one of the uh, uh, art collective called Highlight Center, and they did the, so many uh, like a social, social intervention project on the moment, and uh, uh, he also do some uh, did some uh, uh, individual project, and this is one of the uh, sort of like extreme uh, uh, idea of uh, his uh, project, which is he called like remarks, but the, uh, I think actual translation from Japanese is a script. Uh, so it's an instruction piece to give the, like a simple instruction uh, to the audience to just imagine about how it generates. Uh, the instruction is say, like try to repeat the uh, content of a specific, uh, how it's consciousness as many times as possible. So, uh, which means just uh, keeping in your mind something uh, very uh, specific things uh, uh, as long as uh, as long as possible. So I try to use this idea into my project uh, with the one of the uh, uh, Japanese thinker artist Kenjiro Okazaki's Twitter, uh, which was uh, like he tweet about if you are not. Uh, if you cannot participate the demonstration, uh, you can just wearing the yellow T-shirts or something to show your uh, participation in your location. So, which means y you can somehow participate the demonstration in very different places. So, uh, I uh, put both together in a way. So, uh, my instruction is like this: try to keep conscious about the specific social issue, in this case, uh, anti-nuke, as long as possible while you are wearing yellow color. So uh, uh, I even uh, didn't uh, give, we, we, we probably don't need to wearing like yellow t-shirts, uh, even if we just uh, uh, have like yellow fabric or something, that's also show our uh, the uh, uh, effort to, uh, participating in uh, this anti-nuke uh, protest. And of course, the yellow color in Germany is also the, uh, uh, the, the symbolic color for the anti-nuke uh, uh, protest. So it's all from, uh, it's somehow other way allows to uh, come back here because uh, I did in Japan, uh, but idea from Germany, then now I'm showing the, uh, the project here uh, downstairs. So uh, I organized one day uh, sort of like events to uh, uh, cutting the uh, yellow fabric, then attached to uh, uh, like uh, clothes or uh, bags or wherever to uh, uh, keep pa participating the uh, anti-nuke uh, protest. And then, uh, yeah, um, I, I think it's really interesting that you um, you refer to um, some historical figures in in the Japanese uh, contemporary art, and and those figures are often um, not so well known outside of Japan. I guess um, outside of Japan, people know about Gutai, for example, a little bit um, Monoha, yeah. and um, and but uh, in between there is this. Of, much more radical, much more political movement, like uh, you know, some neo Dada and also all this, um, Pirate Center. yeah, all, all these uh, uh, groups who are doing um, interventions in the city and cleaning streets and um, and so on and so forth. Um, why do you think it's your um, kind of mission to uh, bring this back? Um. I, uh, I'm thinking about because, um, like as I said, it's uh, the history uh, is a sort of like a recipe or a cookbook. So uh, of course, some artists was not really uh, doing something political. But uh, uh, if I make some sort of like different connections between uh, all those like different uh, projects, 
then it becomes something uh, like, I mean, we can use it for, uh, 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 for more political or uh, uh, direct action uh, in this uh, uh, present day, I think. So uh, I try to bring back to the history, but uh, I'm looking back to history, but bring back to the present in a way. And, and also, you know, uh, it's very interesting to see that um, most of your projects um, either very ephemeral or um, having a very expensive uh, duration, right? Um, so they're um, somehow, you know, in terms of time and space, uh, they're somehow, you know, either uh, very difficult to catch or easy, uncontrollable. Easy. <laughs> Yeah, but in between, it, look, it appears quite easy to to look at that, to participate in. But once you're in it, I think it's a very challenging uh, kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, like if you see this show, there is like uh, like so many videos. It's very easy to understand in a way uh, by second. But uh, at the same time, others are try. Uh, it takes like hours to, to looking at. So uh, time is somehow uh, bending uh, through uh, the exhibition, I think. Yeah, I think also the location and distance is something really interesting in your work, um, that you are very conscious about where you are. Um, for example, you have been living in Los Angeles now five years. And instead of thinking you know, um, in a very mechanical way, uh, either you are Japanese or, or Los Angeles-based artist, um, or you are someone um, who uh, somehow uh, uh, belong to a place. But um, I think your your understanding of your location, your positioning, it's much more uh, in this kind of in-between space, mm -hmm. uh, as like you measure the precise distance, and also there's a psychological distance, which is something that you want to uh, share with people. Um, for example, your, uh, a series of projects of um, 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 mobilizing people to share you know, uh, some moments together, um, to imagine that, um, if you were in this uh, earthquake situation, what you do, and so on. All, all this actually is creating a very interesting Psychological or mental space that it's um, that is um, very precisely related to one or two events, one event, and in the meantime, it opens up a um, completely uh, infinitive kind of space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, actually, like my recent project is also uh, related to one specific space, which is the. Uh, uh, one museum in Kyoto, uh, this is a, uh, one museum. Uh, now I'm showing one piece, uh, which is also showing here, but in Kyoto as well, uh, called uh, uh, Provisional Studies. Uh, it, it's gonna be the series, I think. So, but, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, when I went to this museum, uh, the museum itself is not really, let's say, uh, interesting, <laughs> uh, because uh, they are just showing like like this. This is the uh, regular show in this museum. They also are doing a, like a blockbuster show, like a, a show about the Monet or what, whatever uh, blockbuster uh, shows. And uh, but uh, uh, at the same time, uh, the curator told me about the story of the uh, museum itself. Uh, it opened like nine, 1933, and after that, uh, uh, after the World War II, uh, uh, U.S. Army occupied uh, Japan, and uh, they uh, occupied the uh, museum, then turned into the, uh, their living space. So they. Inst uh, the, these two images, uh, uh, they like how they use the museum. So they installed the uh, basketball hoop uh, on the uh, on, on the wall, and then uh, they use the museum for uh, like a, a leisure uh, recreation room. So they play a basketball uh, inside the museum. I think the one of the museum in Germany also uh, used for. Uh, 
a basketball, I think, like a house, the yeah, it's one. the famous building of IG Farm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you see, they maintained. Ah, OK. They maintained the conference hall. IG Farm is historically very significant. Was a conglomerate of five chemical companies. <laughs> It's interesting in a historical context what you are talking about. So IG Farben, which is now a building of the Frankfurt University, was built like a chateau with five wings on top of a slight hill. But it was very kind of a, a feudal gesture. But it was a definitely a modernist building, a Pelzig, very beautiful architecture. And each wing which sort of stuck out into the city represents a company of a chemical conglomerate. And after the Nazi time, after the war, these companies were separated by the American occupied forces. Now each of these companies is bigger than the whole thing was before the war. BASF, IG Farben, it used to be uh, Frankfurt Höchst, which is now a French-German company. So they're all multinational companies. And what the Americans did, it was the Fifth Army of Eisenhower. They made the conference hall, which is very beautifully in design, where all these companies came together and covered them and made a basketball hall. But they covered, and the, the, everything exists still, you see? So it's a very protective momentum. Otherwise, it wouldn't have survived. And it's also a good way of occupying through play, right? It was like when America was good. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, then uh, also the cu curator uh, talks about the other story, which was uh, one of the uh, legendary uh, contemporary show happened in Tokyo, uh, 1970, uh, which called Between Man and Matter. Uh, this was a little bit close to the, a uh, little bit similar to the show uh, Harold Demon did uh, uh, when did to become form. Um, uh, because uh, this show was uh, organized by Yusuke, uh, one of the art critic, Japanese art critic, uh, Yusuke Nakahara, who traveled around the world uh, like 69 uh, uh, to see those shows. So uh, this is the image of the uh, uh, Between Men Matter in Kyoto, because the show traveled from Tokyo to Kyoto. Uh, you can see like a uh, uh, on Kawara, uh, and uh, the floor is the, I think, Richard Serra, maybe, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, yeah, this is also Richard Serra. Uh, this is Jiro Takamatsu. So it's uh, combined with international artists and Japanese artists, and they are all probably like 20s, 30s uh, at the moment. And uh, uh, I was curious about uh, who did the project for the, uh, the biggest space uh, where the US uh, Occupy Forces uh, uh, play a basketball, which was uh, Crystal. Uh, and uh, by chance, you can see the other Crystal piece here in the hall. Uh, so he did the fabric installation uh, in the space. Then I uh, organized sort of like five different workshops with uh, uh, sociologist or uh, art critic to uh, and invite the high school students to work with. One is the, uh, the first one is the uh, reading a curator statement from 1970 show uh, happened in, in this, this space, uh, in, in the museum. <coughs> and the second one is, of course, uh, un unfolding the fabric uh, uh, to entire floor uh, to reenactment of the crystals uh, piece. The third one is invite the sociologist to talk about the uh, relationship between Japan and uh, U.S. and also uh, uh, how uh, U.S. army-based culture uh, impact on Japanese uh, pop culture. And of course, uh, basketball. 
Then uh, at the end, we were also uh, discuss about the uh, war uh, because um, uh, I, I, I somehow feel like uh, because the, the policy of Japanese government is uh, changing a little bit right now. So uh, for now, probably it's we can we cannot see like Jap Japanese going to be have a war, but uh, probably in the future uh, we don't know. So uh, I I wanted to uh, let's say invite these uh, like uh, young people to thinking about the, how we could uh, react one uh, one day we will have a war or something. Uh, so uh, that's the like a, sort of like a conclusion of these five different uh, workshops. Great, thank you. <laughs> so now the war starts. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we still have um, um, some minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes that uh, we can um, have the uh, public to share uh, with Koki his ideas and with questions, or it could be also a war too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any, anyone have any questions or, uh, I don't know, most of you saw the show or maybe you haven't seen the show. Yeah, thanks uh, first for this uh, very interesting talk, and I would be interesting to hear uh, interested to hear more about um, the aspect of education. Is education a motivation behind your work, or how do you relate to this topic? Uh, yeah, it's a good good, uh, good question. Uh, for the last piece, I was uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, like a sort of like educational system in a way. But not just uh, 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 like a teacher educating students situation because I'm a little bit doubt about the, this hierarchy. So I try to uh, uh, make more like let's say like open up the situation between a relationship between uh, teacher and uh, students because my project is not uh, uh, teaching something to the high school students. It's more like a they just uh, experienced the uh, uh, two days workshop. Then uh, there is no sort of like a uh, like a goal in a way. So they just bring back the experience to their every day. And uh, so uh, it's not the uh, let's say. So it's it's more like a uh, I I probably should say it's more like a running. Uh, a, a, experience, not the uh, education. <laughs> because education is always from one side to the other, but the learning uh, uh, experience is more like uh, uh, we are all in the same position. So uh, when I create this uh, two days workshop, uh, I'm also learning from them because uh, uh, I ask each uh, like a moderator to moderate all those uh, workshops. So uh, it's kind of like diff like alternative way to running something uh, uh, with all all the participants in a way. <laughs> More questions? Is it is it challenging? Is it challenging to remain serious? Um, the piece next to the piano where you're, was it creating a path? What was that called? Uh, it's a walk, uh, walk through. I mean, it, it makes made me laugh. Was Were you having a hard time staying serious during that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, like it, uh, one of the reasons why I looks really serious to doing this, uh, like looks like a little bit silly performance, because um, uh, in the very beginning, uh, I uh, like I was planning to do something very specific actions through those objects. So I made sort of like a script in the very beginning, maybe like 300 different actions or something with each object. But the once I placing all those objects randomly, I couldn't find out. So I just start to just reacting uh, and make sort of like a. Uh, in, improvisation, because I cannot remember all the uh, 
prescript 300 actions or uh, I cannot find out the exact object. So I just uh, do it one by one. So I was really confusing at the moment. But the once filming starts, uh, you cannot stop. So that's why it looks like really serious, but doing really silly in a way. Who <coughs> Han Ru mentioned recently in the discussion in Gwangju in Korea, South Korea, that the future of art would be uh, Asian. And it made a lot of sense in this particular uh, situation because the Gwangju Biana was formed 25 years ago after a political protest against the military regime. So I just wonder, is there any connection between karaoke and what you are doing? Ka karaoke? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK. Um, karaoke is, I think, I'm, I'm not really great singer when I do karaoke. But uh, 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 I always feel like also uh, really vulnerable when I sing a song, because um, it's also uh, one of the way of expressing something. But actually, I'm uh, really, would say, uh, wondering what, what I should express. But once you uh, open your up, uh, I mean, your mind, then it became uh, totally fine because you don't uh, just don't care about others. You're just doing your things. And I think uh, maybe, I, I don't know the situation in Korea, but maybe for the Japan, uh, uh, because we are like, uh, like a typical Japanese is just a shy people. And uh, I'm also, uh, uh, sharing this shyness in a way. But the, once we forget about this shyness, we can probably uh, just open our mind and uh, uh, connecting each other in a way through maybe karaoke. Then uh, that become one of the uh, way to protest something happening uh, right now in Japan, maybe. So uh, karaoke could be the key word. Uh, for the Japanese future, I think. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Actually, karaoke is really a Japanese invention, right? Yeah. And it's very quickly spread out across Asia, and now it's coming to the West. Um, I, um, I don't know what do people do after you know the office hours in in Deutsche Bank. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, I think you should install the karaoke bar somewhere inside the building. That would be very helpful. <laughs> but it's very interesting. We all, probably all of us have seen the film Lost in Translation, right? Which I think is very beautiful about cultures. And it's a love story. It's very platonic. However, so far, all the people, and I know some Japanese, they don't like it. Oh. No. Okay. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so maybe you have lived in California for too long. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because also with this karaoke, I think when you hear an 80-year-old man or a 77-years-old year, little girl singing Frank Sinatra, I did it my way, oh, yeah. it, each time it sounds completely different and it has a completely different meaning between this sort of American individualism, consumerism, and so on, a very kind of, I, I, I did, and a kind of almost also Japanese conflict history is ours, civilization, and so on. So therefore, I think it really is interesting because karaoke is a passive activity. It might make it easy for you to overstep your shadow. It's like getting high, getting drunk, or whatever, in a, in a non-aggressive way. But it doesn't, doesn't lead to anything, right? So therefore, his question about education, you answered very well. So you are involved in something now, right? Taking a risk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Matthew is still very strong in Germany, right? 
Sal? Romantism is still very strong in Germany. It's <laughs> I think that's uh, necessary for future, no? <laughs> More questions to join the karaoke? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, over there at the end. Hi, um, I'm <clears throat> my question is about like site specificity and maybe about uh, Koki's future, future practice perhaps. Uh, I haven't, I didn't see anything like uh, anything you, uh, well, anything specific to Berlin uh, in your current show. But did you actually have any idea uh, of an of a work that is like to do with Berlin? And and if so, uh, is there any possibility you you would do it in in future in the future? Um, yeah, uh, actually, in the show there is. Uh, of course, it's not uh, specific to Berlin, but there is one work specific to the Deutsche Bank, because um, uh, I invite the uh, uh, Deutsche Bank employee around the world to participate in one project, to uh, give a one book or one sentence that uh, they thought uh, they thought uh, uh, it's good for uh, uh, it's somehow. Uh, could work for a better world, and uh, uh, I heard that there is like ten thousand employee or more than that. Some yeah, some more, but it, uh, what what? One hundred thousand. Okay. One zero more. Oh, okay. One hundred thousand uh, employee, and now we can get only uh, five books now. So. Yeah, we just started. It's only like for now, it's five books. But uh, I hope we can get like thousands of books here. Then, uh, which means somehow related to the uh, uh, Nazi time when they burning the books uh, next to the uh, this uh, building. Uh, so uh, it it could be if it's if we can get like thousands of books, then it could be the related to uh, very site specific. Uh, 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 to uh, Berlin, I think, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I don't have any idea for the future, so uh, I probably need to come back again to thinking about something for Berlin. You should ask the Berliners. Yeah. The Berliners. For books. For books. Ah, for books, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, you know, about the the Deutsche Bank is somehow more interesting. It's very specific. In the meantime, it's completely global because the, this 100,000 people, they're not only in Germany, they're not only in Berlin. I guess maybe the majority is outside of Germany. Mm. And they're in you know, Hong Kong, Japan, and New York, and almost everywhere there's a Deutsche Bank. So that's. But it's a precarious task, you know, so let's see what, what okay. comes out of it. And yeah. Well, I think it's very similar to how you sell the, the palm tree leaves. And it's, can we say, the, the same kind of trick. <laughs> okay, so maybe we should. Yeah. Okay, so any other question? One last, please. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I was uh, interested in uh, uh, the, uh, referring to the Japanese contemporary art to your piece. So could you explain a little bit more about like, your attention or like, what is interesting you think for the Japanese contemporary art? Um, I actually, um, what's the, I, I, I probably need to stay because um, I'm not really influenced by Japanese contemporary art history because um, I was a really bad student. So uh, I was not really uh, studying uh, Japanese contemporary art. But of course, I uh, was more influenced by like uh, uh, American conceptual art or uh, uh, European conceptual art. So uh, I, more, I, I was more go for uh, these things. But once I 
go out after that school. Uh, I mean, I go, uh, I went to like New York or I went to Paris or uh, now I live in Los Angeles. Uh, every time I met some like foreign curators, they always ask me, uh, is there any like connection or relationship between Japanese contemporary art my practice? Then I always say, no, no, I'm not really influenced by Japanese contemporary art or something like that. But uh, 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 one day I realized that uh, it might be, uh, it might be, uh, there might be some like connection between my practice and uh, uh, Japanese contemporary art. Then I uh, like re like researching about uh, uh, what is uh, Japanese contemporary art. Then I found a fine, uh, I found a sort of like a thread uh, from maybe like 50s to six, uh, 70s. And I tried to stitching out like a different uh, practices from, from that period to show uh, how I can see through those uh, histories uh, of uh, Japanese contemporary artists. And uh, now I could say I'm like, there is sort of like a, my roots in a way because I'm, uh, like I, I made the laughed once, and uh, uh, there was the laughed piece by the play. Uh, so uh, there is certain, oh, of course, even if I don't know these practices before, but I somehow naturally doing something related to their practice. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, maybe one of the way I could say about the Japanese contemporary art.